It's time for the Melissa McFerrin Show, presented by Chick-fil-A. The show is supported by Regional One Health, the official health provider of the Memphis Tigers. Your Mid-South Chevy dealers, the official truck of the Memphis Tigers. The Tennessee Lottery, AutoZone, and MLGW. Welcome in, everyone. Good Sunday to you. Don't forget we got a game this afternoon at the El Marone Fieldhouse. But, Coach, i got to start the show with a congratulatory nod to you. Congratulations on win number 200. She got it. And 150 as the skipper of the University of Memphis. That has to feel fulfilling. It does feel fulfilling. And um, I have to give kudos to the players. We know the players are the ones that play the game. But um, really excited to be at Memphis long enough to get to 150. 200 is, is uh, those big 2-0 numbers are ones that people pay attention to, but I'm just excited to be able to do it at Memphis. Do you, do you remember game one? I do remember game one. When I was at American University, yeah. we won at Fordham, so I do. How about game one with the Tigers? Uh, game one with the Tigers. You put me on the spot here. It would have been with Alex Winchell and Ramses Lundlach. I remember the season, not the game. That's good. That's, <laughs> that's very good. You do remember 200, right? I, I do. I remember Just 200, Because, right. you know, she, with the years, ladies and gentlemen. No. The years. Yeah. The years. <laughs> but uh, the, we're going to talk about that. You had a split this week. You did get 200. That was uh, against a team that you've had their number, at least Bria Elmore. You're going to meet her a little bit later. She's had their number. And then the second game was... Uh, just a couple of nights ago, you had to lead the whole game, and you let it slip away at SMU. Well, we were coming off of those two great home wins, and then of course now we got to go back on the road to SMU. So we played we played incredibly well. Um, just down the stretch, we turned it over. They found a really hot shooter, and that was the difference in the game. Yeah, um, and as as you wind down here now, it, it, I think your team, although it's banged up again, you lost another player. It seems as if uh, the fatigue part of the whole thing is maybe they're getting over the hump. They well, see the end of the tunnel. I mean, fatigue is a reality. It's a reality of every season. Um, we are working really hard to manage the fatigue of our players, but I would be lying if I said it wasn't there, and I would be lying if I said the banged up issues aren't there. Um, we're playing on a short bench. Um, we're just doing everything that we can to stay healthy. We have more things going on in the training room. Our trainer with Julie Elena and our strength coach, Bethany Ganey, but they are very good at what they do. So we're going we're gonna to feel it a little bit, but we're going to lace them up and play. I think you're keeping Barry Phillips and the folks at Campbell Clinic Absolutely. busy too. Here is what is coming up on the Melissa McFerrin Show. We've got a couple of games uh, that we'll show you highlights of. One's a win, one's a tough one. Uh, at SMU. The Chick-fil-A outstanding player is Bria Elmore. You're going to love meeting her in studio. She's right here. And then a little bit later in the program, Regional One Health Inside Access is Jessica Benson's look at Taylor Williams. And then finally, it'll be the AutoZone Road Ahead. We began at the El Marone earlier in the week. Stick around. This is the Melissa McFerrin Show. You're watching the Melissa McFerrin Show, presented by Chick-fil-A. Welcome back in. You know, the uh, game with Central Florida at the El Marone Fieldhouse had a couple of special things riding on it. One was your shot at 200, but also this was a play for K game, and you told us a little bit about the honoring of K Yao and the fight for cancer. Absolutely. Play for K is our national initiative for women's basketball, so it's a very special day for our entire community, but also a very special day for our team. Um, has, as has been well documented, we lost a, a mother December 1st, Bria Elmore's mother, Diane, um, to a recurrence of breast cancer. And so it was a special day for us. You see Bria scoring there, probably a very emotional day for her, but a really, really great day. And what we hope is on a day where we're wearing pink and we're honoring Diane that we come away with a win. Certainly we did that, but also Bria Elmore had a very nice game. Her family was there to join us in the ceremony. So uh, maybe a little bit bittersweet, but I hope more positive memories than negative. Well, a, a wonderful game for Bria. 22 points, which was game high 
you know, the first time she played Central Florida, she had 25 points. It was a career high. What's what's the deal with the matchup with her in Central Florida? Well, Central Florida is they're going to zone us the entire game. As we know, Bria Elmore is one of our better shooters. Mm -hmm. So I think it gives her an opportunity. I also think she's played both of those games very, very motivated, very aggressive. And, and that's helped her put points on the board. Um, one of the reasons Central Florida was, was in their zone was to really kind of shut Cheyenne Creighton out. And so you see us putting a lot of threes in the air there. We go seven of 18 from uh, the field, uh, excuse me, from the three point line. And um, we needed Taylor Williams from the three. We needed uh, Bria Elmore from the, three, from the three. And we needed Taylor Barnes, our freshman. We just saw Creighton who was held to four points and four rebounds and played all 40 minutes in this game. That is very unlike her, but when she's getting double and triple team, I did see she got the ball to the open person. She did uh, make plays in this game. So her presence was felt, but I, I'm sure she had to be frustrated. Oh, there's no question. I mean, Cheyenne's seen a double team and sometimes a triple team at times. And But Cheyenne is a very, very unselfish player. So she's gonna make the extra pass. She's gonna make sure the ball ends up in the right player's hands. When we didn't have her scoring, though, the player that really um, picked up the load was uh, certainly Taylor Williams there, but also Taylor Barnes. Um, very, very good game. Shot fake pull up as you see Bria scoring a baseline uh, jumper there, but uh, Taylor Barnes with a really good night. And uh, you know, this was this was one that was tough in the in the beginning. Yep. You were just ahead by one at the end of the first. You, Actually, we're down at the half in this game. This is one of the few that you pull out at the end, whereas it's gone the other way for you much of the year. We were down by seven at the half. Uh, we only had seven players in uniform for this game, so we were mm. in a zone the entire first half. Once we survived any possibility of foul trouble early on, there you see that double team. Um, did a good job that time, though. <laughs> she did. Once we survived any foul trouble, then we went back to our make and miss defense. We had an opportunity to turn them over quite a little bit get in transition and I truly think that was the difference in the game is that we got the tempo up. But when when I look at this team and there you see the happiness you get the W uh, and that is win number 10 on the year so I know you feel pretty good about that and it's it's win 150 but it it also had to feel good to win one for Bria oh, and, and her mom's mom. Oh there's no question about it. Um, it was interesting as we went through the week when we went to our huddles, instead of saying Tigers are team, our team began to say family, one, mm. two, three, family. And um, we handled that week. We know it was a difficult week for um, Bria, um, but I hope that and think she felt the support of her team as well as her family during, um, during what was a tough week, but I also hope a good week when she has a chance to look back at it. And then on to Dallas on a Tuesday night at the historic Moody Coliseum. It's SMU, and uh, uh, this is a ball club that you can play with, and you led for much of this basketball game. In fact, you had a nine-point lead in the third quarter, and here's sort of the trend where you don't have that many folks on the bench, and you got to play a lot of minutes, and at the end, you're out of gas. Well, we've, uh, we've kind of adopted a little nickname here in the last couple games. We've called ourselves the Salty Seven, and we've <laughs> decided that's all we need. We won with seven against UCF. We found out just before the SMU game that Brianna Porter was not going to be available for the game. Wow. That gave us really six and a half because um, Bria Water Cochran really should not have played in this game, but we really didn't have a choice. Um, we played great defense in this game. It was a battle. We had their number. We kept the ball out of their best players' hands. We were great on the glass. We It was a low-scoring game. That's what we needed. Um, the zone really helped us in the first half. You see a great play there off of a plate called by uh, Bria Elmore. Well, I, I want to ask you about Milena Baich because she's a sophomore now. She didn't get a whole lot of minutes last year. She didn't get that many minutes in this game, 24. She had 10 rebounds in this game. I love watching development. It looks like she's starting to catch on. I think she is. She's taken a lot of heat for not being a very good rebounder here so far. So <laughs> I, I, think, I think she's hearing the message now. She also, as we know, is from Montenegro. She actually had somebody in the stands last night, oh. uh, a friend of her father's in Dallas. So uh, maybe she was trying to show off a little bit. But those 10 rebounds were critical. Of course, 
the latter part of the game, we just, we had a couple empty offensive possessions. We had a couple turnovers. They found a hot shooter that had a career high, 15 points from the three-point line. That's the difference in the game. And you had to play Taylor Williams 40 minutes. You had to play Brea Elmore 39. I know it's starting to add up. It may be, um, but as I've said, we're not admitting that. We're going to lace them up and play. All right. Uh, one of those ladies, Bria Elmore, she played a whole bunch of minutes in this game, too. And they honored her mother at halftime. You'll get to meet Bria Elmore in just a minute. You're watching The Melissa McFerrin Show, presented by Chick-fil-A. Welcome back. This beautiful young lady between the two of us is Bria Elmore. We want to welcome you to the show too. And I, I want to ask you something. I know this is, this is hard. It's difficult. I lost my mother this past summer and whenever it happens, it's hard. Mm -hmm. So you lost your mom, Diane, and I know that she was honored at the half the other day. How are you hanging in there? How do you cope with all this? Um, I'm hanging in there. Um, the team and just playing basketball itself helps it a lot. Uh, because it seems like a family. That's one of the reasons I came to this school is because when I came on my visit, I was like, this is a great family atmosphere. You know, they were always joking and laughing. And just being around this team this year, it's just um, a lot of laughs, a lot of jokes, and just a lot of good times. So and, that's helped me a lot. And they've had, yeah, that, 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 is, that is really wonderful. I think playing Central Florida has helped you too. What is the deal with you and the Knights? I mean, you played, you get 22. A uh, game high the other night. You had your career high 25 against them. What's what's the deal with that matchup? Um, I don't know. I guess it's just that zone. I just love the zone they play. And, um, it's just getting in the middle of the paint and being able to uh, get the threes up in the air. So That's when we see zone, Melissa, is this your go-to? Uh, her and Taylor Williams, there's no question about it. I mean, we try to get them in spots where we know it's difficult coverage. And, mm -hmm. And we tell them that we, we've got two kids that have the green light from three. That's Bria Elmore and that's Taylor Williams. So uh, and, and, she can, and she can create, too, because I, I watch you go to the hole. And between those three weapons with, with Cheyenne, that, that's, that's your offense. That's consistent, anyway, uh, for the most part. Now, this young lady also wants to be involved in broadcasting. Now, I know you took a little tour of this place. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Um, it's awesome. I've never been to a actual new studio so just looking seeing all the cameras and the green screen behind me you know it's it's pretty cool <laughs> what uh, are you studying it what what do you what aspects do you want to be behind the camera in front of the camera what would you like to do um in front of the camera i want to do um play-by-play -play basketball you know one day and because sometimes i can see it before the commentators say anything i'll be watching the game like oh he missed that pass or he should have screened and roll so <laughs> yeah. you know that's what i want to do no coaching you just like the broadcasting aspect um, of it. I want to coach as well. There's, you know, a lot of different things I want to do. You know, hopefully I have a, enough time to do it. Would she make a good coach? She, I, she would. She would. I think she's going to relate to the players very well. Um, <laughs> I was surprised to hear broadcasting because I've been hearing coaching lately, but that's the beauty of being a college student. You get, you, you, you get plenty of time to make you, up your mind. You get to figure <laughs> it all out. But she did have to make one decision I'd like to ask. So what, you talked about the family aspect of it. What was the critical thing that got you here? Um, the team. And I like the coaches too. The coaches I jet with the coaches in the Good campus, thing, huh? right? <laughs> and the campus is um, not too big, not too small. It's just like a little square, so I like that too. Yeah. All right. Well, we wish you the best of luck. Thank I you. I could see her standing here one of these days without any question, or I could see you standing in the coach's box with her too. Awesome. But best of luck uh, the rest of the way. That is Bria Elmore. When we uh, come back, we take a quick break. CW's own Jessica Benson will sit down with Inside Access and she'll talk to Taylor Williams. That's next on the Melissa McFerrin Show. You're watching the Melissa McFerrin Show, presented by Chick-fil-A. It is time for Inside Access and a little earlier this year, our own Jessica Benson had a chance to sit down and chat with sharpshooter Taylor Williams. What's been your favorite thing and what will you miss the most after this year comes to an end? Ooh. My favorite thing would be the intimacy with the fans. Um, coming here my freshman year, I, was, I didn't have any family members in Memphis. Um, so the team kind of brought me in as a family type of thing. But also the fans, you know, they're very, very personable with you. And um, just like boosters, we share, you know, a lot of common interests and stuff like that. And just holding events like hoops and heels. And um, 
I think I'll probably miss that the most. <laughs> Off the court, your teammates have kind of talked a lot about the chemistry that you guys have, and you guys have a lot of fun. Uh, what's your favorite thing to do with your teammates outside of the game? I think we're goofy. Like, as general, we're, we're goofy. There are some, like, shy people, but... Um, just goof off, have fun, uh, play music. We do a lot of singing and dancing, so um, that'll probably be my favorite part. <laughs> you talked a little bit about some of the older girls, the seniors you lost last year, helping you come up. How are you helping the younger girls on this team now do the same thing? Um, right now it's just to get them to understand Melissa's system. Um, it's also to help them understand what we do off the court and how we are a brand and how we're supposed to, you know, act a certain way. Um, also, <clears throat> excuse me, um, also just guide them in any kind of way, if it's communication on the court, if it's, you know, encouragement, if they're nervous, stuff like that. I, I love the thoughtful answer. The intimacy of the fans, that's, that's pretty good. And, and that's something that we work very hard at. Um, Taylor Williams is a perfect example as she's gr grown through our system. It, their interaction with adults, with fans, with potential employers, with internships, their ability to stand in front of a group and, and communicate well, present, those are all things that we work on. Taylor Williams is a great example. Probably as a freshman, she would have been great, but she would have been a little giggler. Yeah, and now, right. you know, you see her really evolving. Give me a little inside access, if you will, on the conference. We all know UConn gets plenty of national respect. What about the other teams in terms of postseason opportunities? Just this week, I was on a conference call. We're the strongest we've ever been. Right now, we're considered the fifth best conference in the country. I would say that we likely have four locks for the NCAA tournament. That's the most ever for this conference. If we'd had four last year, we would have been in. Yeah. And uh, so aside from UConn and South Florida, uh, one of our opponents this week, Tulane, coming up, is also going to be in there, and, of course, Temple. Well, we, uh, we will talk about Tulane and also the game that's going to take place tonight at 530. That's next with the AutoZone Road Ahead. You're watching the Melissa McFerrin Show, presented by Chick-fil-A. The uh, AutoZone Road Ahead is not an easy one. We're talking about one ranked team, 20th in the country tonight, and then uh, later in the week, a team that is getting votes. But tonight, it's at the El Marone Fieldhouse at 530, 20th ranked South Florida. And Melissa, I just want to let everybody know, the game is on ESPNU. If you're not going to the El Marone and you're, I don't know, there's something else I think that's on, you might, you might be watching that. If you are, you get a little bored, ESPNU. There, not everybody in this country is a football fan. So Football's going on? Oh, okay. If you're not a Super sure. Bowler, then come to the field house because 20th ranked USF, we upset them last year on our home court at the El Marone field house when they were ranked 15. So... Might be a good night. I would love to see history repeat itself. And then a little bit later in the week, it's Tulane. They're getting votes. How good a team are they? Very good. They're fourth in our conference right now. Um, at this moment, they're saying they're going to be a nine seed in the NCAA tournament. This has also been a team uh, just a year ago we beat at home. So we're looking forward to a good week. We've only got a few seconds left to go. Do we still have a chance, WNIT, some kind of postseason? We do. We, we've we got to get busy. And we probably have to win five of our last eight games, but we still have a chance. So as long as there's a chance, you're going to see the Tigers working. I know you'll get busy. See you tonight at the El Marone Fieldhouse. Have a great week, everybody. Thanks for watching the Melissa McFerrin Show, presented by Chick-fil-A. The show is supported by Regional One Health, the official health partner of the Memphis Tigers. Your Mid-South Chevy dealers, the official truck of the Memphis Tigers. The Tennessee Lottery, AutoZone, and MLGW.